This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. And then we'll break. Hey, y'all. This is April. And this is Caroline. And this, what is today? Today is? 19th. Today is um, 18th. Tuesday. Tuesday. It's the quickie day. We're all in the news. But you know what I was thinking on the way over here? We never tell them how they could help the podcast. Oh. You can do a couple of things to help the podcast. You can do, um, you know, you could tell a friend. <laughs> You can send some episodes to a friend. You can also go on and rate us or write some reviews because we haven't read reviews in a long time. (laughs) Mm -mm. Um, You could also go to our Bloody Happy Hour cash app or what's the other one? Venmo. Venmo. And buy us around because that always makes the episodes better. You can also subscribe to our Patreon where Dirty Chad goes there, you get all the episodes that we put out with no commercials. Our video goes there, too, now, if you like watching our videos. Um, and any bonus episodes that we put out go there. What else, Caroline? Anything? Oh, BetterHelp. Also, um, the show is sponsored by BetterHelp. So, 2024... If you want to just make your life a little bit better, take your acid therapy because you know you need it. Um, all you got to do is tell them all your issues. Do you have it? I know. So, I mean, April, you've had quite an experience with the therapist and you probably should have gone to better help sooner. Uh, but good thing that it's here now and you can always switch it up because, you know, I know people benefit from this. So if you're thinking of starting therapy you should give better help a try um where do they go oh you go to betterhelp.com slash bloody and you can get 10 percent off your first month wow that's better help h-e-l-p dot com slash bloody you won't get 10 percent off if you go to waco psychological <laughs> is that where casey goes is that where casey works <laughs> okay All right, so um, what we do on this podcast is we drink and we tell you everything that's in the news. So, Caroline, I know you got some stuff. You want to do it at the beginning or the end? What's my stuff? Well, I just didn't know if you had any updates of what's going on. I saw Richard Allen. I saw... There's... There was... This week was pretty busy. Okay. You just want to save it? I'll save it because I didn't listen to it. Okay. All right, so we're going to start off in Alabama. You ever been? Oh, we have a (gasps) guest on the show! Ah! Oh, my goodness. <laughs> She's obsessed with, with Alabama. Alabama? <laughs> like the team or the state or? Just the team Who is and the this? school. Who is this person talking? Yeah, we have a guest. Get a little bit closer to your mic and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Shelby. I'm going to be their guest today. And I went to Alabama. Oh, like Nick Saban, Alabama? Yes. Yes. Are you a little depressed? Uh, I've been a little depressed for a while now. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's why you should all go to therapy. <laughs> go to go that's to why you help. should go to BetterHelp.com. Get better help, and you won't be as depressed when your team loses. So, if you are a OG listener and you've listened to all the episodes, you may remember the episode where Caroline, you know, got home from a party, took her dogs for a walk, and decided it was a good idea to write an <laughs> anonymous letter and put it in somebody's envelope. Mailbox. I mean, mailbox. Mm-hmm. But of her neighbor. Yeah. So if you remember that story, then on Thursday, you want to tune back in because then we'll tell you more about it. Yes. And why we're bringing this up. Yes, yes, yes. We're yes. basically, I'm, I'm kind of excited to just now, I'm going to tease Ross. y'all. Yeah. And it has, there may be a little Ross connection. It's connected to that story. So there may be Ross in. connection. So if you want to know about that connection, you better listen on Thursday because. 
We will have our guest back. Shelby brought us some margaritas from Sam's Bar today. Thanks, Shelby. So I'm double fisting it. That's a great idea. Pop off. So let's go to Alabama. Uh, What happened was a four-year-old kid went missing about 1230 on Friday, January 12th. Now, the mother's name is Cheyenne, Cheyenne Ray. Mm -hmm. She said that she left him in the camper in which they live. So they live in a camper in uh, this wooded area. And she walked over down down the ways to her mother's camper. And when she got back, her son was gone. So they did like an emergency missing child alert. And immediately there was tons of like volunteers. There's tons of officials. Like there were like police. Everybody was on the scene to go and walk and search this wooded area looking for this four-year-old kid. Did I mention that he had autism and he was nonverbal? Oh, no. Wait, this sounds like that one kid with the bicycle helmet. He does not. It's no bike and no helmet. (laughs) So. But it does because that kid, what, he... He had no name and he couldn't speak. Oh, yes, yes. A long time ago? Yeah. Yes. I know. I don't know. I don't remember a bicycle helmet, though. I think he was just found behind a dumpster. <laughs> oh. I mean, I think he had a bicycle helmet. He had a helmet picture on. with a bicycle helmet? Yes, that was oh, the picture. Okay. <laughs> Lord Jesus, everybody just got confused. Yep. <laughs> okay, so now during this search, they saw little bitty footprints near an area, this wooded area. So they looked further and they found little Phoenix. His name is Phoenix Wilkerson. But this was Sunday, 315. So he went missing Friday at Was this that little noon. white boy with red hair? Yes. Oh, and they yes. found him at 315 on Sunday. So what is that? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three days later. So he's kidnapped and then they just let him go. That's my prediction. He is redhead. Your favorite. Um, my favorite. When they found him, he was wearing the same clothes that he had on when he went missing, but he was not dirty. He was barefoot, but his feet weren't even dirty. Oh, he was sick. They allege that he would been in the... First, they thought he had been in the woods for all three days, but, but you can't be. No. And be, you'd be like Devante Cavacante or whatever his name is. You'd be filthy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like his hair would be matted. He'd had something on his mouth. Like he'd been trying to eat dirt or something. Um, They can't question him because he's a nonverbal kid with oh, autism. Oh, gosh. And they're not sure where to go with this investigation. So they reached out to mom, Cheyenne, to try to get some information from her. And she did not respond, but she did make a Facebook post. And her Facebook post said, my baby has been found and is okay. We're at the hospital right now, but overall he is okay. I have no words. I'm so thankful for every single person that came out and helped search for my baby. I wish I could hug every one of y'all and all of the law enforcement people too. Thank y'all for everything, but most of all, thank God God is not capitalized. Drives me crazy when people do not capitalize God. Um, For keeping him safe and bringing him home. God is good and he listens. My baby is okay, y'all. Okay. Then, space, new paragraph. I am human. I see everything y'all are saying, she wrote. I don't care, really, but it is sad, y'all. I have nothing better. Y'all have nothing better to do. My baby is home and alive. What's happening is they are talking bad about her Uh for leaving a four-year-old kid with autism in the camper by himself, allegedly, and going to leaving him. Just period. It doesn't matter if you're going next door. doesn't matter if he's asleep. Four-year-olds are sneaky, but four-year-old kids with autism? On another level, they're like ninjas. They'll just take off. How many times do you see missing... Kid with autism. Well, at least once, because that's... And usually they're barefoot because they're very sensory. So is this suspect? Who? Is this suspect? Is this suspect? Is this a sus? Is this sus? Oh! Is this story sus? uh, Yeah. 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 What are we thinking, Shelby? 
I kind of feel like it's either an inside job from the mother because I have trust issues after the Ross episode. And <laughs> what does episode the mother have that? a boyfriend? I'm not sure what number, but it's when you talk about Ross and then it talks about like this really terrible mom that like murdered her two boys in a car. Oh, yeah. Susan Smith. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, she's terrible. But she's the worst. I'm thinking mom or mom's boyfriend. And but that's just me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right now it's just being fully investigated, but not as like a kidnapping or stage kidnapping. And part of me was like, what if she was going to be a Susan Smith or Andrea Yates and kill her kid? But she got a second mind. Hmm. That's always a good so story. So there's nothing? They don't know? There's nothing right now. I mean, they're investigating, but what? I mean, I need some leads. What? Yeah. You can't question the kid. So you're going to have to dig not, pretty like, deep. He can't, there's no, no way he can communicate ever. Like, well, four-year-olds can't spell yet. So it's oh. not like he can, I mean, some we four-year-olds may have. didn't just walk away. He had to have been like. Oh. Why wasn't he but dirty? But that's the thing. Four yeah, year old like, kid, yeah, why isn't he dirty? Four-year-old kids with autism walk away all the time. So if he'd have been filthy. Yeah. Then like, we would have been like, oh, great story. But he wasn't filthy. So no. then where was he? And nobody has come forward and said, I found this kid and I took care of him. And I, I mean, he's healthy. Why was he the house by himself at all? They didn't even say if he's dehydrated. Is he hungry? Like they didn't mm. say anything. So I, mm. I'm going to follow it because Keep I, an eye on that I one. hope mm -hmm. that there's going to be more. Hi, I'm Christine and I'm an alcoholic. Here's the deal, everybody knows somebody that has suffered from the disease of addiction. I want to invite you to listen to Purpose Driven Sobriety, where we have real conversations with real people that have suffered from the disease of addiction and have gone on to thrive. Here, we shine light into the darkness that is addiction. You can find Purpose Driven Sobriety on Facebook or anywhere you get your podcasts. Hi, this is Sarah. And I'm Carter. And this is Some of Our Thoughts. We're two Southern sommeliers, and we want to share everything we love and know about wine. We started hanging out during quarantine and cooking and drinking and listening to music, and we just thought this would be a great way to bring everything we know to you guys. We will make wine knowledge and food pairings easy and approachable. So put on your favorite vinyl, grab your favorite glass of wine, tune into our show, and let's have some fun. Wine, wine and vinyl. vinyl. <laughs> so check us out on roguemedianetwork.com or wherever you get your favorite podcast. We'll be talking about a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's... Mm, let's go to Kansas City. Okay. Missouri. And this is the day that the Chiefs played, who they play? The Dolphins for the playoff game Saturday? Uh, Kansas City yeah, played the yeah, Dolphins yeah. and beat the Dolphins? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 38 year old Ricky Johnson, 37 year old. Oh, the three guys. Yes. 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 37 year old David Harrington and 36 year old Clayton McGinney. McGinney. Yeah. They all went to their friend Jordan Willis's house. Jordan was this brilliant scientist. He was having a um, watch party for the Kansas City Chiefs game. We're in Kansas City, yes. so it's a big deal. This was Saturday, January 13th, okay? Now, it was a party there. The last person left around 11 o'clock, okay? Mm -hmm. um, no one heard from these three guys since they arrived or since the party. So on Tuesday, so the party was on Saturday, finally, after calling Jordan, whose house that was, mm -hmm. they called Jordan, they were calling the, the three guys that I named at the beginning, um, multiple people knocked on the house door, and Jordan didn't answer. So finally, Tuesday, which is Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, four days later, 
Um, Clayton's fiance, April, was DTF. And she decided to go knock on the door, knock on the door. She didn't leave. She broke in. Okay. She was like, I am going to penetrate this home. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to penetrate. <clears throat> April did some penetration. Now, <laughs> she, when she went in, she did announce herself, like who she was, why she's there. I'm April. I'm here to penetrate. I'm here. <laughs> Don't shoot me. I'm looking for my fiance. When she went to the back porch, she saw a body on the back porch. And then she called the police. It was he was non-responsive. Called the police, nine one one. They came out there, and there were two more bodies covered in snow in the backyard. What the heck? Four days later, after the party, so they asked Jordan, person who lives in the house, scientist, alleged friend, what happened? What happened to them? Jordan's response was, "I guess they froze to death." Oh, good. What? Jordan coming in with the scientific facts. Oh, yeah. I mean, wow. you got to be a scientist. Man, to you're so smart. So how did you not know there were three dead bodies in your backyard for four days? Because April, they froze to death. He was in the house? And you have two dogs. Jordan lives there. It was his house. Yeah. April, they froze to death. What kind of shape are the dogs in? Did they say anything about that? No. So when she, April was at the house, the dogs weren't there anymore. But neighbors said that Jordan had two dogs that are usually always there. So did he take the dog somewhere else because they were barking and trying to get at the bodies? Or or what? We don't we don't know. Search warrants are being executed, like, right now as we speak, and toxicology tests yeah. are being done on the dead bodies because nobody knows what's happening. And police say there are no obvious signs of foul play at the house. So it didn't look like a struggle. It didn't. You didn't find any weapons anywhere. But he also had four days to— uh, Did they have any wounds of anything? They didn't say— it, They didn't say anything about wounds. It's—you know, when you're— in the ice, your body's basically being preserved. Yeah. So that's the probably a the perfect yeah. way to, yeah. to find a dead body. Um, but if they were doing drugs, and so, you know, some of these drugs are nice. only in your system for oh. but how do a they little get... bit amount of time. But when you're dead, they still, they'll would, stay. They, they have to stay there. They can't go, right? They won't. You can't, like, sweat them out or... We need the autopsies to come in. Yeah. <laughs> so we're waiting on the autopsy. We're waiting on the to toxicology report. And since then, Jordan, so guy who lives in the house, scientist, has had a U-Haul at his house. And he's moving all of his things out and is moving. Hmm. Why he moving, April? Hmm. Why he gone? What's your theory? Oh. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't even have What's a theory. What's your theory? Well, they disappeared on a Saturday. So I'm kind of thinking he got in a fight with his friends, locked him out, and let them die. <laughs> yeah, but like these are three grown ass men. Your car their cars were in the front yard. Right? So were they just doing a lot of drugs and he didn't realize he let them die? That's it. That's my theory. <laughs> No, I think it seems like a little messed up. He probably killed his friends. Maybe they had a fight on Saturday. What teams were playing that day, you said? Kansas City and Miami. Were Did they you both... know the affiliations of the four individuals? I mean, they're from Kansas City. I'm just going to assume they're the, Kansas City fans. The three, dead, not the three dead had on Kansas City jerseys. Did they? Did yeah, they? in the picture okay. I saw. Or they were like fans. So I don't know about the house they were at. Maybe he was a Dolphins what fan. What was the outcome of the Dolphins game? They, they lost. The mm, Chiefs won. Sounds like the motive. <laughs> <laughs> she might be permanent on the podcast. She's... I'm sorry. Did I... No, no, no. A no, motive no. because they lost? Well, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, being an Alabama fan, like, sometimes football, sports can make people emotional. It's like a crime of passion sort of thing. Maybe there's a bunch of money on the line. Mm, gambling. And so in order to not pay the money, you just mm. kill them. Which April's them? People are FBI. thinking... People are thinking <laughs> drugs. Like, here's the party. Here's my thing. April, you were DTF for 
and you know, you penetrated the house, but why did you wait four days? Like this is your fiance. Yeah, He's gone why did Saturday you wait four days. Like Sunday, maybe. She like maybe that. he got too drunk or whatever. Even if he did drugs sometimes, then maybe he had to like sleep it off Sunday. But like by Sunday night, he went answering texts. Or she your had phone to call. Do with it. She was the hooking owner up of the house. With the owner of the house. They were. I don't know why mm-hmm. she wouldn't. Now it did say that people try to go to the house multiple times and knock on the door. And Jordan just did not answer. And he was there because when she penetrated and called 911, <laughs> he was inside the house. What's your theory? My theory is probably drugs gone wrong. And I think that Jordan. Like a deal? Like, no, like they were just doing it, doing mm-hmm. drugs, and doing they drugs. Ended up in the snow. And you think about like smart scientists, like they really will dabble in some shit. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> and your scientist, like he's probably cooked up some good meth or something. Yeah, heroin. And he's, like, he's probably been high. Breaking bad up in here. He's probably been high <clears throat> this whole time and didn't even pay attention. And then they were snowed in. So do you go in your backyard like when you're? When you're snowed in like that? I? How many people didn't leave the house during our little freeze? <laughs> At least one of us. <laughs> I was home for three days in a row. So. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Me too. So, I don't know. I, I, I would say probably drugs. <clears throat> I would have to interview April and ask why the hell didn't you go quicker? But drugs is like they, the, the three guys did too many drugs and they ended up in the snow and dead or like, like there was an exchange oh, that went wrong and there was like a tussle or no i think they just did like overdose it's probably gonna be like some fentanyl or something like that how'd they end up in the snow and then um it was nice when they started unless they like and then paranoid uh like jordan there no, paranoid J- jordan drugged their there. ass out there because he thought they were turning against him he had drug brain uh, Oh. I think he had drug brains. Oh, no. All the drug brains turned against each other. <laughs> and three guys were left outside. And so then they just, like, couldn't find their car. They were just No, I think they were just dead. I think he took them outside because they were dead. I think they died in the house and he took them outside. Oh, hell. Okay, well, I can't wait to see if you're right. Because you don't... typically are. She's basically FBI. I really hope he's a Dolphins fan so I have, like, some credibility here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I agree. Well... Let's go to Texas for our last story. Okay. And then I do have some updates now that you've... Okay. I've reminded myself. Let's go to Humble, Texas. That's near Houston. <laughs> yeah. So some maintenance workers uh, got a service call to a Houston apartment complex uh, because a dishwasher was not working. <gasps> so maintenance workers do their job. My they dishwasher don't wasn't working. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> can happen to anybody. It <laughs> can happen to anybody. They, did you get yours fixed? About a year later, yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> You're real black. <laughs> You're real black. <laughs> <laughs> so um I just hand washed. <laughs> You're strong. I'm strong. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, so they walked into this apartment complex. They're working on the dishwasher. And they heard a child. Now, nobody else was in the house, but they heard a kid crying uncontrollably. So one of them decided to go and, like, look, like, where's this kid? Because there's no adult here. They saw a little toddler on the floor in the living room under, like, this big blanket, like it had been hidden. They lifted up the blanket, and they saw that the limbs, the legs were duct taped together. This is a two-year-old toddler. So they take photos and videos, and then they leave. But they call the police for a welfare check, and the police show up. So they meet the police. Why didn't they, like, help him? Get the kid? Well, all that's evidence. Oh, was he alive? Can you take his pulse? He was going to Was he dead? He was, he was alive. He was crying. Oh, it's a oh, listen to the story. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was listening. <laughs> he was uncontrollably crying. Um, 
Well, yeah. Okay. And I think these, so they've signed these strict, there's these strict rules for these maintenance men. They're not allowed to touch anything else besides what they're working oh. on. Oh. Um, so they were protocol. They, they yeah, were. they were protocol. And they were like, let me let the police handle it because it's the suspect. Yeah, I don't want to mess up any crime scene. Yeah, you're right. You're they right, you're even right. took videos and like took pictures. So I thought they were a okay. little DTF. Yeah, you're right. So now the two-year-old was taken to the hospital. The doctor said that she would not have lasted through the night. She had a brain bleed caused by head trauma. She was anemic. And her kidneys were in failure. What? She too is nonverbal. Oh, hell. She was so malnourished that her weight was equivalent to a one year old. So this. she weighed like 12 pounds and she should have weighed like 24, I guess. That's not, that's not a good sign. So CPS meets with the adults that live in the house oh and the children that live in the house because there's other children in the household, right? And it turns out that none of them are the mom of the child. The mom of the child left months ago and lives in another state, but she left the child with her 27-year-old cousin named Tonisha Deshay Perkins. Okay. <laughs> Who said, when asked why was this kid tied up in the middle of your floor, she goes, oh, you know, the kids play like that all the time. They tie each other up all the time. Well, with all the time. With listen, duct tape. Bro, oh I God. can't even tear duct tape. And duct I'm tape? a grown-ass adult. No. I can't even tear it. Duct tape and is kids, the hardest the kids thing. tear duct tape. So when they interviewed the kids, they got a different story. The kids said that the two-year-old has to sleep on the floor, that um, she gets taped up all the time, and she gets popped if she removes the tape from her legs and her mouth, and that there is always a lock on the fridge so that the two-year-old cannot get any food, oh, and they're like not the allowed to... Give her any food. That's like the eight passengers. Frankie, Fra yeah. Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt. I got this from Nancy, and Nancy was comparing, because it's always duct tape, like Casey Anthony yes. duct tape, yes. Ruby Frankie duct tape. Yes. It's always duct tape, but it because it's so strong. Now, three adults lived in this house. There's Tonisha, her boyfriend, Kenry. And then um, there is a 17-year-old who I guess they're considering her as an adult named Maya Magruder. She is the daughter of Tonisha. They're all being charged with injury to a child and unlawful restraint of a person under 17-year-old. Those oh. seem like minor charges. Mm -hmm. So do we think there should be an attempted murder charge? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, you're... The doctor said she would not have made it through the night. Yeah. If they... So just by divine intervention, the maintenance, maintenance men yeah. happened to... So what... This okay. is what I think is... I think they all left because they thought she was going to die. So they left her on the floor to die, covered her up with a blanket, mm, and left so that when they came back, they can... Call 911, either get rid of the body or think of some type of story. What would the story be? Like what you said earlier that they like they were saying like they tied each other up for like the kids. Would, yeah. Allegedly, whatever. Mm -hmm. But there was no other kids in the house. So there were kids. They interviewed the kids and the kids are the ones that told them that she's always tied up. And yeah, that but they were she there gets popped. Well, when when the maintenance guys there. showed up. No, 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 no. Okay, no, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah, like their story wouldn't. No, I think that when she would have got, they would have got back. They would have got rid of the tape, and she would have been dead. And they either would have got rid of the body, or made up some random. They just story. didn't know the maintenance guy was going to show up. Yeah, yeah, no. So it ruined their plan. It ruined their plan. I think they left her there to die. Got it. That's lovely. There should be an attempted murder charge, but okay, what about the mom that just abandoned her? Mm, yeah. With her really shitty cousin. Oh, no. Yeah. No, yeah. You yeah. Really shitty cousin. Yeah. 
So I think the mom should be charged with some type of abandonment. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. She didn't have anything to do with the abuse, but you have to know your cousin was shitty. Mm-hmm. So what's... I don't know. That's where it is. It's just a... It's and just... that was in uh, hum- Humble? Humble, Texas. Yeah. Oh wow, that's... Oh, it was just, it's just wow. horrible. A two year old, which uh, here's what I think is the two year old is probably autistic, nonverbal. It's either nonverbal because it had no way to flourish and, you know, and get oh, language, uh-huh. or she was autistic and they tied her up to keep her out of things. What about the head trauma? The head trauma, she was beat. I mean, yeah, there's so head that tra- can cause lasting damages too. Yeah. Yeah. There's no telling. All right, and this is just a local story to watch. It happened yesterday here in Waco. Oh. Oh. The what? questionable death. Oh. What? And then have we to- have uh, the trial that's coming up for the story that you did, Tammy Harlan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that, is that the name, Tammy mm-hmm. Harlan? That's mm-hmm. the one that hit the Baylor student on the bicycle. Uh-huh. Damn. That's supposed to be coming. Okay, you go. And yeah. Then okay, so... Lorena, which is basically Waco. It's like yeah. 10 minutes south of Waco. There was a 911 call on Old Temple Road. So it's right by you. And the a woman called and said, get here quick. A vehicle fell on my boyfriend. What? She's- when the police got there, boyfriend was unconscious. They did CPR. And then the fire department and ambulance came and they took over CPR. So they got there yesterday, which was January 17th at 3.09 p.m. is when the police got there. Okay. Okay. They did CPR. He was pronounced dead at 3.24 p.m. So I feel like they didn't do CPR very long. Um, but he was probably already dead when they got there. His name was um, Jonathan Harris. He was 40 years old, right down the road. Lorena Police Department, so it's uh-huh. a small police department, says that this case will be investigated as a questionable death. Because how does a car fall oh, on you? Oh, no, it was snowing. <laughs> it was snowing. I feel it was snowing. The, the verbiage is interesting to me. A vehicle <laughs> fell on my boyfriend, and I looked for the girlfriend's name, and it's nowhere in the articles. <gasps> so I actually need to go back. and Because, you know, when they post it on Facebook, they'll, like, tag. What did it fall off of? I don't understand how it fell. I yeah. think she ran over his ass. Mm, oh, to hear that's more. <laughs> one way the vehicle can fall on somebody is if you get run over. Or was it up on a jack and the jack fell? Oh, like but did she the tire dro- kind of thing? Why yeah. would they not say that, though, in the article? Because it's questionable. <laughs> <laughs> she probably just pulled the jack out and was like, look. Oh, no, you're dead. <laughs> Anyways, it's it's local. It's right down the road from us. I just want to watch it because I feel like there's going to be, there has yeah. to be more. They have to follow what up on the story. What was the boyfriend's name? Jonathan Harris. He was 40 years old. Hmm. Do some Googling. He's our yeah. age. Okay. That is uh, all I have. <laughs> okay. Um, I just saw that the Innocence Project is taking Scott Peterson's case. Mother. <laughs> They go Bro. way too far. They are, it's probably going to be Kim Kardashian up in here trying to be. <laughs> they go way too far. <laughs> yep, they're taking on his case. I just mm. saw that. Um, <clears throat> Chad Daybell's attorney. So his his main attorney wanted to be excused or recused from the case because it's been so long and it's ongoing, and Chad can no longer afford to pay him. So he was trying to get taken off the case and they had a trial or Uh, like a hearing today. He was denied. So he has to stay on the case. Because that's not fair. I mean, I don't want to take up for Chad Daybell. I know, but he apparently agreed to it. He's like, bro, I can't pay you anymore. And he's like, well, sorry about it. The the judge is like, no, we're not doing this shit. We're like, you're staying on it and we're moving forward. So he's got to do the rest of it pro bono. Yep. Which is going to be the bulk of the case because you still got to go trial. Yeah. And then um, 
Richard Allen. So that's the Delphi murders. Mm-hmm. So he remember his um his two attorneys were the judge removed them as his attorneys and they were um I don't he wasn't paying them. It was just like a what do you call it? Pro bono. Yeah, but they were yeah, yeah. P- public defender. They oh. were they were yeah, they were yeah. for free. So the judge was trying to get them taken off because there were some photos of the crime scene that was leaked and it ha- happened from one of their offices oh, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. So they had a hearing today and uh, with like the Supreme Court. So it was like a big, they had, they had to go a step above from just like the regular hearing, right? Okay. Uh, and they decided that he could keep his original attorneys, mm-hmm. which is good. Because I don't think he did it. I think he's innocent. I think he's been totally framed. Mm. Totally innocent. So Supreme Court reinstates his attorneys, which is how it should be. Wow. So I'm happy about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So there That's you go. it for your quickie. You got a whole lot of news. We will see y'all Thursday for a full episode. Where are we going, Caroline? Um, we are going to Connecticut. Are we going to Connecticut? It's it's a oh we're going to Rhode Island. Rhode we're Island. We're going to Rhode Island. We've never been to Rhode Island. Newport, Rhode Island. Okay. Real bougie. Is it? It it is. Okay. We're, they're basically living castles there. Oh. Okay. Yeah. They rich rich. <laughs> All right. Shelby will be there too. She will. We will see y'all in a little bit. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Bye, Bye y'all. Bye. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.